good morning. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? So my uh, title of my talk is Science and Technology Serve People. It's kind of a story of a, uh, of a case where how to come from ideas and theory to practical applications. First, uh, we start <coughs> by the day in, in the introduction, I had the statement that you may carry 10 billion transistors in your pockets. Then we start waking, we can find the 10 billion transistors. You carry, carry, carry fuel with you. Then we discuss the technology. I give a very rough general introduction of the atomic layer deposition technology, ALE technology, and how it was invented, and what makes ALE unique, and what are the special properties to the ALE material layers. Also, we can find that with, with this kind of technology, we can make physics and, uh, and, and chemistry meet each other because we are, we are bringing chemistry on to, to atomic level. And next, uh, we take a more general view of the timeline of, of ALE, general view of ALE development, which is this particular case, and then more generally, the hierarchy of time span of scientific work. And, uh, and also what gives the passion for lifetime work in general. So let's start from the, so from the, from the transistors. You, everybody, all of you uh, carry a smartphone in your pocket. We start by opening the cover and we can see the printed circuit board. In the printed, printed circuit board, we have <coughs> the microprocessor, which has the size of your, of your thumbnail roughly which has a large number of transistors. Traditionally, the transistors were manufactured on, on a smooth surface. It was called the planar technology. With the ALE, now we are able to squeeze the size of the transistors. And one part of the of of uh, uh, squeezing process is to use three dimensions so that Instead of putting only one in one plane, we can make uh, structures uh, with, uh, with three dimensional features. And finally, the individual transistor uh, has uh, uh, channels uh, 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 surrounded by the gate electrode, which then very uh, effectively controls the current flow through the channel. And now we are, make, we are uh, approaching uh, 10 billion transistors on that area and keep going even beyond that. So uh, everything started in this particular case in 1974 from the question how to produce materials with ultra high dielectric strength, which were needed at that time for, for uh, making electroluminescent flat panel displays. The state of the art in, in uh, 1974 was that high demonstration was demonst high performance was demonstrated, but there was major problem with the stability of the dielect <coughs> of the uh, due to the high electric field which was uh, affecting across the materials. So we, here we have the light emitting layer is the yellow one here and it, it is uh, surrounded by dielectric layers, the white layers in the picture. I had some uh, experience with, with amorphous semiconductors and, uh, and the key lesson there was that if, if we need to have well-controlled electronic properties, we need materials with highly ordered material structure. As you know, semiconductors uh, traditionally are built on single crystal materials, but when we need to build up something else, uh, uh, the, the materials are not necessarily single crystals, but they should be as well-ordered as, as uh, possible. Using the traditional thin film methods, there are certain limitations in uh, controlling the structure we are, we are forming. The, what generally occurs is a kind of nucleation that 
uh, creates uh, polycrystalline material with grain powderies and, and other type of disorder. So for going beyond that, we need to think about the, pro the growth process itself. So that after, if we first transfer material and it's then start, it start ordering that, it's very difficult to get the, to, to, the, to a perfection. So what could be a, a way of building the order just when making the material? At that time, I was sitting in my office looking at the, the periodic table of elements hanging on the wall, and that was the idea coming that, that once we were looking for certain compounds, why could we think about ordering the material following, following the two different types of materials? The first material here was zinc sulfide, so it's uh, two six compound, which forms a slightly ionic bond between the two elements. So this is an uh, overview, but I already mentioned that in traditional material trans, uh, thin film me methods, we transfer material and then we make a kind of heat treatment. Is there a laser point here? Okay, here we are. Uh, the material is first transferred to the, to the surface. We like the, the, the uh, fin film to be formed. And, uh, and then some kind of heat treatment or other tre post-treatment is needed to finalize the crystallization. In the case, oh, sorry. In the case of ALD, uh, we start working with, with L1 element at a time. In fact, we let nature take control so that we create conditions where the temperature of the surface is high enough to prevent condensation of, L of any of the reactants we are using. It means that only in the case <coughs> the, the upcoming uh, atom is able to find a uh, uh, compound pond, which is stronger than the bonds between the, the uh, atoms of the element itself, it may stay, it means that it, the surface will be saturated after the buildup of a single atomic layer. Then we change to the, to the other element of the compound and then occurs again, only the compound bond is strong enough to keep the atomic layer on the surface. That's then continued the number of times. So instead of controlling the flux, intensity of the flux, we are simply counting the number of reaction steps we are, we are introducing, and that gives the final thickness of the material. So now it means that we can, we can make very strictly defined thicknesses, even of a few atomic layers, which today are needed in the in the uh, uh, integrated surface. So it's simply this demonstrates the situation, how we first uh, form the first layer. The picture is highly simplified because nature doesn't work exactly in the way in the first, for the first layer, there's certain surface reconstructions so that we generally don't get a, f a theoretical full density, but the e essential thing is that we still get the, uh, the saturation. So in the next step, we have the next one, and then we have the final compound. It's more practical to, instead of using the elements them, themselves as the reactant that would limit uh, the, the choice of material to be processed, we used compounds of the elements, suitable reactant, which first uh, leave uh, some ligand on top of the first uh, atomic layer, and then in the next step, we have an exchange reaction which removes the ligand and, uh, and releases the desired atomic layer on top of the first one. But the result is about the same. So I don't go to the details in the surface reconstruction, uh, <coughs> but so this is the general principle. Now the result is that instead of having a, a, a film thickness, relative to the, to the intensity of the incoming flux, we can get uniform thickness. Well, it's enough to, to say that uh, the, the flux is enough to give a full coverage onto the surface, which means that we can, we can code even very, very complex structures. Now, the atoms clearly in this picture are too large because 
they in fact practice, they penetrate into very, very small uh, uh, structures here, and, and uh, we can quote uh, whatever uh, geometry we have, even porous materials with nanometer scale pores in the materials. So there are some uh, uh, microscope pictures of the same. This was, was one of the very first things where we demonstrated conformal layers. It must, uh, the picture is from 1990s. And uh, this demonstrates that, that uh, the uh, <coughs> trench on, on a surface may be extremely uh, deep and narrow, and we still get fully controlled atomic layers, uh, film thicknesses, and we can even tailor the composition of the compound so that we can choose, in, in principle, even each atomic layer separately and make co combinations of compounds with, with new type of, of uh, uh, structures. This picture demonstrates the, the effect of conformality so that in this case, there's some dust particle on or the or micros very microscopic particle here, and it, it's covered, and you can see still the, the, the structures. This is kind of, of, of hetero, uh, 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 that is that, uh, where, the, where the composition has been changed. So now we are on an atomic and nanometer scale. And <coughs> this on a, a new picture of the transistors we were discussing earlier. So the transistor is made in three dimensions, and the, and the current channels are here, and the gate controlling gate is here. The most critical layer is the, the gate dielectric, with, which uh, f follows the shape of the, of the uh, current channel, and the thickness of that is in present transistors is only a few atomic layers which means that, that basically the only way of using that is to control the growth one atomic layer at a time. Technology allows a kind of self-aligning self systems, which, uh, which uh, makes it possible to, to uh, uh, let lithography go much beyond, much below the, the wavelength or even uh, uh, ultraviolet or, or, or very uh, <coughs> low wavelength uh, light, and that's the way of, of getting to the nanometer scale. Now the 10 billion transistors is obtained with so-called 10 nanometer. Uh, 10 nanometer technology, but today we are already going towards 7, 5, and, and 2 nanometers. This is an example of, ex, uh, ox, uh, of a study made of a heterogeneous catalyst. We have a powder material. Uh, each powder particles has channels with, with nanometer scales. So that's powder has a, <coughs> a surface area of something like four to 500 square meters per gram. And putting that powder into a container, we still have completely uniform uh, coating or, or, or surface structures inside the pores of the porous materials. And this is a, a theory <coughs> or measurements at the top, at, at, the, at the bottom. And it very strictly follows the, the calculated uh, densities, which are dependent, for example, the type of, of reactants uh, we are using. And it also means that now we are at, at the, the boundary between chemistry and physics, and we can even make up initial quantum, quantum chemical analysis for the, for the chemistry and uh, uh, apply molecular modeling to uh, understand the structures formed in each reaction step. Uh, let's look at a practical point of view. This kind of development is divided into very different areas. One is to understand the chemistry, and another technolo technologically important part is what kind of machinery we are able to build to make it practical. Because for making 
in, in the case of few atomic layers, it's not the critical from the processing time point of view, but for example, in the very original application, which was the electroluminescent flat panel displays, the thickness of the whole package was something like one micron, which means thousands of atomic layers. So it means that we have, have to be able to, to process that relatively quickly. So the first application from the idea to the, to the demonstration and pilot product, which by the way was a big information board at Helsinki Airport in 1983, uh, it, it took uh, uh, some th more, than, yeah, more than five years already. In the next step, the de development was directed, yeah, this is the, the full factory, factory that was built for making the things in, in early 80s and the, the EL panels were uh, manufactured then in uh, mainly for special instrument applications uh, and that's a picture of the factory today and one example is a possibility is transparent uh, transparent displays so that we can make windows where the message uh, appears uh, in the window. Applications are mainly in, in uh, uh, environments where the temperature range is exceptionally high or where there are uh, high mechanical vibrations and things like that, so that uh, this display is mainly for special courses. Let's look at the reactors. The first generation reactors was for making the EL panels. This was a reactor for that, and started commercially in, in 1985. Uh, in the next step, the development step for semiconductor applications during the 90s, and today's reactors are very complex systems, which, is, which are a part of the production line in semiconductor industry so that there's the 40-year the time span already. ALE's impact on end products uh, became meaningful in the case of semiconductors about uh, 10 years ago, demonstrated in 2004 and commercially 2007 or something like that. But let's look at the scientific activity. Those four, the, the first 20 years, during the first 20 years, the scientific activity was very limited for several reasons, because it was a commercial activity and the, the, the development was made in commercial company so that uh, uh, there was also limitations for the, uh, for the disclosure of the technology. Anyway, where there was some selected uh, event that uh, made it Made, made it public. The breakthrough occurred in 1994 when we introduced the technology to semiconductor industry and after that uh, we started an explosive increase in the elect activity. It's interesting to note that the, the scientific activity which makes basic research in, in chemistry and, and, and physics of the, of the uh, uh, the surface chemistry of the layers uh, started when it became uh, evident that the, the final uh, product is, is meaningful and there is real use for, the, for, for such uh, applications. So that in this case, the, the trigger for, for basic research came from application side. And, uh, uh, as uh, we, we discussed yesterday a little bit already for in, the, in the panel discussions, it's a kind of cycle between, between theory and praxis. Sometimes, very often, we think that we start from idea and basic, basic research and then gradually enter to, to, to applications. We see what can be done with, with this and this. But in, in uh, many cases, we can see also the opposite as here, that we, we identify the need and then we gradually see what kind of basic knowledge is needed to make it real and make it, make it practically usable. So the ALD produces uh, 
a very important technology for, for semiconductor uh, components, but also due to the density, high density, high quality of the film, it's extremely effective for different kind of chemical barriers, specification layers, which are needed in many types of applications. One is, you know, is solar panels, or so the backside of silicon panels may be coated with an ALE, thin ALE uh, uh, passivation layer, which also inc increases the current collection efficiency and ensures uh, excellent protection against humidity and other environmental effects. In lithium batteries, the cathode may be connect, co uh, coated with, as you can see, two nanometer scale, with a two nanometer specification layer, which follows even rough surfaces and uh, prevents uh, non-wanted, unwanted chemical reactions, but, but we can uh, let current flow through, electrical current. Some of the EL, uh, EL uh, materials, uh, uh, Lumin uh, EL materials, uh, sorry, the and LED, LED lights, uh, the powders which are used for, for, for getting necessary uh, uh, spectrum to the light. Some of the materials are, are moisture sensitive and they are powder materials, but even the powder can be now coated with the new nanometers passivation layer and make use of effective materials. These are uh, medical applications, so uh, implants, which may be uh, uh, medicine uh, dosing for med med dosing of medicine or, or some uh, sensors under the skin uh, may be coated with, uh, with uh, ALD films. Uh, organic light emitting diode can be can be coated to, to utilize the materials which are moisture sensitive and for, for a big surprise also very large items such as the telescope mirrors can be coated with very optically perfect uh, material layer which also passivates the, the silver surface and prevents darkening of the, of the, of the surface. Okay, let's look at the time span of, of developments in a most general, general state. We are used to think that technical development is very fast because we get new models of, of mobile phones or any other applications every month, every week, or, or, or very, very short times. So we, this, this tells about uh, uh, renewing period or months or something like that. However, any major improvement in the product needs, needs new generations of products. Now we already speak about time spans of, of years. Technologies behind manufacturing extends to, to tens of years and basic research for technology and application opportunities. When we go to the, to the uh, basic uh, theories, uh, theories of physics, extends to, to tens of years and hundreds of years. And we don't stop even here, but we can see that, that uh, also something that occurs in our society is the cultural heritage and traditions which extend even to, to thousands of years. And the renewal period is, is uh, uh, very long in that. There are very important messages in, uh, in this chart so that you can think about, think about uh, the production line starting from the beginning here. When we make a change in our production line. It's, it's a huge development because the production line which produces thousands or millions of products is extremely uh, fine-tuned so that making any change of that is, is a huge risk and needs, needs uh, immediate, needs a lot of preparation in order to prevent catastrophes than in the production. 
so that the, the uh, deeper we go in, in, the, in the chart here, the uh, weaker is the kind of inertia in taking the result into practical use. When we go to uh, 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 technologies like ALD, it means major change in the production line. And, uh, and uh, the application of the technology, since it is ready in the laboratory, takes years to, to make it uh, usable in, in real production, starting from pilot, pilot production. And uh, that's why uh, there's a very high threshold in making such decisions. As we know, uh, uh, development steps in, in our theories uh, may extend to hundreds of years. Newton made, made a major step in, in uh, providing the basis for, for mathematical physics. And, and that created a strong activity in mathematics then in, in, the, in the 18th century. Once the, the physics was better understood, it also means that new events, uh, uh, new <coughs> observations can be, can be found. And we need that something must be corrected. We can do that either by adding uh, uh, correcting features to the theories, or then look back to the basis and see whether we can see the whole package in a, in a more uh, general, uh, more uh, covering way. So that it's a question of, of uh, uh, absorbing, in many cases, new ways of thinking. And the threshold for a new way of thinking is very high. When I introduced the ALE technology, first time, in fact, it first time was, was uh, introduced to, to, uh, in a display conference, I get a very nice positive response. And from a scientific or technical conference, we got something like 4,000 product inquiries by mail. At that time, we didn't have, didn't have uh, uh, any emails. That was the, the Good news, the bad news at that time was that we didn't have the production line yet, so we lost a huge campaign. When I next year presented the technology in the Crystal Growth Conference, uh, the, the reaction was uh, 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 quite uh, uh, reserved. And in fact, to something like two months after the, after the conference, I received a letter a uh, bunch of papers from a well-known professor uh, in the area of, of uh, uh, thin film processing, where we, in the cover letter, he explained that in the laboratory, we have proved that your technology for making material one ato in atomic layers is not possible. And the proof is in the, in the bunch of papers which is attached to the letter. So at that time, we had the, pro had the process in, in pilot production so that it doesn't disturb too much. But it tells how difficult it was to think material built up in a new way. And, uh, and uh, in fact, I heard a professor in, at Helsinki University that, that still in early 90s, some of his colleagues abroad had uh, explained to him that, that actually it, it can't be possible to make the thin films in that, that way. So anyway, if, if the films are formed and in the applications work, we have to accept that, that uh, certainly we, need, we don't have to, to blame nature. It works just, just that way, and we have to blame our own thinking. So sometimes it may be very difficult to think about goals reaching beyond uh, uh, years or, or 40 years, as in this case. This is, however, not the case in, even in, in, in any long-term developments. We need to have some uh, uh, steps between and, and some uh, early goals. In our case, we have the EL panels first. Then we studied the, the new applications and, and then implemented the technology in, in most important applications. 
thinking about that carefully, that uh, is something to do with our everyday work, so that uh, we can also understand that even very small findings, which we can, we can make even every day, are, uh, are uh, targets that, uh, that uh, are acceptable. Each, each step is an accepted task and brings the experience of success, which is also important for, for feeling the joy and delight of the work, so that we feel that we have succeeded again and, and we gradually go towards the, the long-term goal. We discussed about how to go from, from idea to commercial success. There is a Finnish saying that one drawing is worth 2,000 words. We may continue that list by saying that one demonstration is, for, is worth 1,000 drawings and one product is worth 1,000 demos. One uh, vital, uh, uh, vital industry is worth millions of products. From an individual's point of view, we can look the list like this. When is the work completed? Scientists celebrate the idea, thinks now is the problems in the world, they are solved. Then engineers comes and, and states that that's not enough, but, and he celebrates, now we have the successful demos. Production manager celebrates successful mass production and high yield. We can continue. Quality manager celebrates successful test results and reproducible specifications. No, is now everything completed? No. Marketing manager celebrates enthusiastic market response. But sales manager is happy only when orders are received. Then we go to financial manager who celebrates paying customers and the money received. Generally manager and owners celebrate profitable business. So that's a long, long way to go. Everyone anyway can feel proud for being a part of the process which is benefiting the society and sustainable development. That's why it's very important to understand that the goals we are approaching, even in the long term, uh, are, uh, are important. It's very important to understand where in, in which direction we like to go when we discuss about technologies which, which starts from atomics, atoms and, and tiny things, uh, it, it opens a very wide scope of possibilities. And it means when, when we think about the chart which I showed earlier, the hierarchy, the, the lower we are in the charts, the wider is the scope of options, what we can, what, where it can lead to. And that's our choice, of course, where we have to direct it, the, our, our main uh, efforts. So thank you very much for your attention and with my best wishes for success.